Okay, so let's just spend a few minutes thinking about irrationality of humans. Well, my preferred definition of irrationality is when people make systematic and frequent persistent deviations from what we might think of as a rational choice. And I want you to beware the commonly held idea that irrational behaviour is in some sense being gormless or stupid. It's not. Uh, oftentimes our behaviour is predictably irrational and it makes sense to make irrational decisions. All it means is you're moving away from the assumptions of rational choice. Those assumptions belong to econs. Uh, we are humans. Humans are emotional people. They make decisions in hot and cold states. Emo uh, humans are Im impulsive. Oftentimes they have an immediate need for gratification. They often lack self-control. They, uh, For example, uh, there's a gap between an intention and an action. Uh, we want to be healthier, but uh, we want that chocolate bar now. Humans are social. They belong to many networks at local, familial, uh, local, group level, regional level. Humans can be altruistic, generous and forgiving rather than purely self-interested. And humans crucially have limited time, energy, brain power, limited computational capacity. And crucially they have regrets. We often regret the decisions we've made. Uh, we may also have a strong sense of loss aversion. We'll look at this by the way in the second session when we think about uh, behavioural biases common to many people. Loss aversion is when we feel the pain of a loss much more than we feel the benefit of a gain. Here's a couple of uh, suggestions, two or three suggestions for some reading. Michelle Badley's very short introduction to behavioural economics is superb, published by Oxford. Rory Sutherland's new book, Alchemy, The Surprising Power of Ideas That Just Don't Make Sense, is a terrific read with lots of great examples. And so too, The Choice Factory, which is much more of a business-applied concept, uh, applying it to marketing, advertising. 25 Behavioural Biases That Influence What We Buy, a book written by Richard Shotton. So please do uh, tuck into those if you want to read more. In a previous session, we just introduced the work of Daniel Kahneman. Kahneman, of course, the author of Thinking Fast and Slow. Uh, Kahneman won the Nobel Prize for Economics several years ago for his work in understanding the psychology of decisions. And in particular, Kahneman and his uh, co-author, uh, Amos Tversky, both of whom got the Nobel Prize, uh, they talk about what's called dual system or dual process theory. Now, according to dual process theories, uh, the decisions we make are often a result of two competing processes in the human brain. First one, system one, or uh, is basically uh, the domain of intuitive response. It's, it's when our decisions, our choices are fast, immediate, automatic, instinctive, intuitive. System two is much more conscious, effortful, thoughtful, slower, deliberative, reason-based, taking in all the evidence and coming to a, a calculation. It's careful thinking. And so we talk about system one and system two. Well, where, where might we apply system one, system two uh, in the real world? Let's give me, let me, I'll give you three examples. Parking in narrow space, speed dating, and the thorny issue of sports team selections and trials. Have a, have a think about this. Where, where would you put system one and system two in these three examples? So what about parking in a narrow space? Well, for most people, certainly myself included, I would put that as a system two. It takes a lot of time, in my case, a lot of time and effort and mental energy to park a car carefully, safely, without a scratch in a narrow space. There are others who can do it much quicker, uh, as we'll see in a video I'm going to post on the on the webpage. Speed dating, that sounds, in many cases, more instinctive, sounds more immediate. Oftentimes people come to a view pretty quickly when they're in the world of speed dating, both face-to-face -face and online. What do you think about sports team selections and trials at school, at university, at clubs? Well, often, in fact, it's a combination of both. I mean, selectors, coaches, team officials often bring to the process multiple biases, preconceptions. And it's often the case in trials that uh, there's an immediate response in terms of making decisions about players. But be aware that there is a system one, system two, or process one, process two uh, theory of behaviour. 
There we go, a quick look at the theory of irrationality.